What if I told you you could play full Windows PC games like GTA 5 right on your Android phone or tablet? And when I say play PC games, I'm not talking about cloud gaming, I'm not talking about streaming. What we've got here is x86 emulation, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to easily set this up. In fact, you're going to be able to install games from your Steam library and even sync up your save files using a simple application for Android known as GameHub. I've been using this application for quite some time. It's from a company known as GameCern. You might have heard of them. Initially, when this released, the only way you could use a controller was using one of their GameSir controllers, which was definitely a big letdown. But now you can basically use any controller, even if you want to use like a wireless uh, PlayStation 4 controller or a wireless Xbox controller. And a few months back, they also added Steam support, so it's really easy to log into your Steam account inside of Game Hub and get the games you already own. It used to be that this was kind of a DRM-free situation, but now with Steam integration and even Steam cloud saves, you can basically install any Steam game. Now, not all Steam games are going to work. Keep that in mind. It's not a perfect solution to running Windows games on your Android device, but there are a lot of games here that are working, and uh, they work way better than I ever thought they would. What I've got here is the Red Magic 10 Pro. It's got the Snapdragon 8 Elite. You could also go with something like the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, Gen 2, Gen 3. You could go below that, but just keep in mind, I mean, for 3D games, you will need a little more power to emulate these games in Android. And I waited on this because the whole game search situation, uh, just knowing that you had to have one of their controllers in order to use it, Plus, the Snapdragon 8 Elite was the chip that I really wanted to test out, but drivers weren't so great. And to tell you the truth, uh, in some cases, you might see better performance out of something like the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. It just really depends on the game. But either way, PC game emulation on Android has definitely come a long way. So before we get into it, I do want to show you like uh, Skyrim running. You can check the compatibility and it does say perfect support here, but I've run into some games that say perfect support and they just won't boot up, at least on my system here. And there's also a ton of parameters that you can change, but luckily GameHub actually downloads a nice little profile for each game that's been tested that they've made a profile for. And for the most part, that should get you started without having to mess around with a bunch of settings. Now, what Game Hub is doing here is very similar to what WinLater is doing. We're basically just emulating x86 over here. It uses Wine, it uses Proton, it uses Message Drivers, depending on what CPU you're using. And the whole application here is really easy to navigate with a controller or even just the touch screen. So keep in mind, you don't need a controller. You can use touch screen controls for basically everything here. So I've just started up Skyrim, and this is my Steam version of Skyrim. I've got my Steam account linked over here, so uh, it's really easy to get your games installed. You don't have to worry about DRM free because it does detect that we're running Steam to play these games. Now, I'm sure if the game has some kind of anti-cheat software that needs to be installed alongside it, it may not work here. But I'm going to go into the settings, and we're going to set this to medium. We're running at 720p medium, and again, I can't stress this enough. This is not cloud gaming. This is not streaming. It's not using Steam Link. The game is installed on my device and we're emulating it here. I've had really good luck with a lot of these older games and one I really wanted to test was Cyberpunk 2077, but unfortunately on the Snapdragon 8 Elite, as soon as I get into the game, it just crashes out on me. And down here at the bottom, we've got our performance metrics. This can be customized. It can also be disabled. Gives us our GPU, CPU usage, FPS, everything like that, so we know exactly what's going on. You can disable it if it's distracting, but it also gives us the uh, total wattage being pulled from the chip we're using. And again, we've got that 8 Elite here. I've seen this thing go up to around 10 and a half watts with some games, but here it is. OG Skyrim running at medium 720p, 60 FPS on Android. And this is really awesome. I mean, I've always wanted to play Skyrim at a decent frame rate on a mobile device. And of course, we've got devices like the Steam Deck and the ROG Ally X. And if you really want to get into portable PC gaming, I would highly suggest picking up one of those devices. This is not an answer for that. Not yet, at least. And in the future, I mean, with ARM chips being as powerful as they are and seeing how far this has come, it definitely could be. But at the time of making this video, it still has a long way to go. Either way you look at it, I do think that this is impressive. I mean, being able to run some PC games on your Android phone with an ARM chip is pretty awesome. And you can see, I mean, this game is playable. Few graphical glitches here and there, and like I mentioned at the beginning, the Snapdragon 8 Elite still has some driver issues, so there's a chance, I mean, some of these games are going to perform better over on the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. 
Now I'm gonna move over to my game capture. I'm gonna show you how to get this installed, how to get it up and running, a few tweaks here and there. Then I wanted to test out a couple more games by the end of the video. Moving over to the installation, and this might look a little different than your Android phone, but I'm on an Android tablet just to give us a little more screen space to work with. First things first, we need to get Game Hub. You can get it from their official website. Check out everything on the page. I mean, there's some information here, kind of get you going with it. But uh, what we want to do here is download for Android. We're going to download anyway. Once that's finished, we'll open it up. We'll install it. And if you've never installed a third-party APK, it might give you a few warnings here and there. I'm just going to go ahead and install. We'll open it up. Now, one thing to note about uh, Game Hub itself is you do need an account. What you got to do is basically put your email in, or you could do a Google account, Apple ID. I use an email. You'll have to agree. Email. Put your email in, whatever you're going to use. You'll choose send, and it'll send you a verification code to that email. Go ahead and grab that. Just place it in here. I'm going to enable notifications. You don't have to. It's up to you. And from here, we can kind of explore the app to see what's going on. So there's a bunch of games listed here, and most of these are going to be compatible. For instance, uh, let's see uh, Doom right here. Perfect support. Now, that doesn't mean it's going to work on every device. And even then, I've run into some of these games that say perfect support that just don't run well. Check compatibility. You can also do this for a game. It'll kind of give you an idea of what you need for that game to run properly on your device. But the main thing here for me, at least, is Steam. And it's easy to set up. So up at the top, we've got my PC emulator, view game library, PC Link. We don't want to do this. This will be remote play or streaming. Uh, PS Link, another remote play application. And we've also got Steam. So this is where we can log in. When it comes to this part, do it at your own risk. I suggest using an authenticator with your Steam account. That way you're good to go. So you can use the Steam app itself and it will give you a login QR code to automatically log in. So do this at your own risk. Sign in. Once you're logged into your Steam account, right under your profile here, this is going to be your Steam library. So this is all of the games you own in Steam, but not all of these are going to work. So if I just click on a random one, let's say Left 4 Dead, Unknown Support. Not exactly sure if that's going to work or not. I haven't tried it. I've also seen some green check marks and some yellow check marks. So for the green, perfect support here for Grand Theft Auto 4. But some of these are listed with a yellow check mark and it says perfectly supported. So I'm not exactly sure what's going on about that. Either way, like here, Borderlands 3, little yellow, but it says perfect support. Check compatibility. Yeah. So it's kind of hit or miss. I kind of wish there was a uh, filter option. I personally haven't found one. If there is one and you know about it, let me know in the comments below just to find the games that, you know, are supported here. But we've also got our search. There's a newer game out. A lot of people have been loving. Silk Song, right here. In my Steam library. Perfect support. We're going to get game. Install. Keep your screen on and stay in the app for a smooth download. I know. And it's going to download for us. So up here, we've also got our little queue. Give it a little time to finish up. Okay, so now we've got Hollow Knight Silk Song downloaded. You can start it from here, but this is where the ease of use really comes in. So if we want to launch the game, it's going to download the firmware for that game. So basically, this is going to download the proper drivers for your said device that you're installing it on. This has the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, I believe. It's the Galaxy Tab S9. So it's going to download everything we need for this specific device. And we can always change that later on. I'll show you how to do that before we even get into the game. After it's done downloading the firmware, it'll start up for you automatically. But uh, if we want to tune anything or tweak any of the settings, we can go to whatever game we want to do this with. Right here, three little dots, PC game settings, and we've got our general options right here. So we can open that desktop container. We can change the resolution. You can enable Mango HUD, DirectX HUD. All of the firmware and packages that have been downloaded seem to work pretty decently. But moving over to compatibility, 
We've got the layer here, which is Proton 10 ARM 64X2, but the translation parameters are really interesting. So this is a pre-made preset for Game Hub, the game preset. Sometimes harder to run games will work better with like performance or extreme, but you might have some textures missing here and there, uh, sound glitches. So for the most part, I've been with game presets, but yeah, you can go through, check everything out here. And moving down just a bit, skip audio video, GPU driver. We've got that turn up driver because we're on that Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 right here. But you can go through, download an earlier version or even a newer version if one's listed. I'm going to stick with what we've got here because uh, it seems to work pretty decently for the most part, especially if it's one of those games that's compatible and it's got that game preset. So we'll start it up. It's detected my Xbox controller. I've also got a mouse and keyboard plugged in, so you can play that way, uh, even on the built-in screen, but I'm connected to a game capture right now. But this game and a bunch of other indie games, like even Hades 2, run really well on these devices using Game Hub here. They're not super hard games to run in the first place, so it can emulate them quite well. This one's running at 60 FPS. I mean, it's more than enough for me on a device like this, but we could take it up to 120 if we want to. The screen here is a 120 hertz refresh rate display. So from the settings, we can go to 120. Before I wrap it up, I did want to show off a couple more games. So here's Dirt 3, and I know it's an older one, but uh, it's a game I still like to play, and it is fully compatible. We're at 720p. I didn't try to up the resolution on it, even though I think we probably could. Still looks great here on the smaller display. High settings, 120 FPS, and we can't quite hit a steady 120 with it, but it's getting really, really close. And the final one I have here is Grand Theft Auto V. Now, I've seen online that this game running, you know, close to 60 FPS on some Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 devices. Right now, I'm just using the preset that was downloaded with the game. So if I went up to performance or extreme, there's a chance I could get better performance out of it. It's not quite at 40 FPS, but you could lock this down at 30. And I'm sure, you know, in the future, once we get better drivers for these ARM chips, we'll see much better performance out of a lot of this stuff. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. I'm super stoked for this, and I just can't wait to see what comes in the future. I've been messing around with Win Later for quite some time on the channel, and uh, this is some of the best performance we've seen so far. I'd love to know what phone, what tablet you're using in the comments below, what kind of performance you're getting out of what game. So let us know down there so other people have an idea of what they can run. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. And like always, thanks for watching.